this guy criticizes the World Bank. So Trump wants to put him in charge of it. Is he going to wreck the World Bank? Or does he have other plans? Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. Take a moment to subscribe and turn that notification bell on, because on America Uncovered, fake news gets real. The World Bank. For decades, it's lent money to poor and developing countries around the world. It's part of the globalist international order that U.S. President Donald Trump loves to criticize. We must replace the present policy of globalism, which have it just taken so many jobs out of our communities and so much wealth out of our country and replace it with a new policy of Americanism. I also don't like globalism because it perpetuates the idea that the Earth is a globe. Obviously, it's a time cube, people. Teach the controversy. Anyway, Trump has been critical of a lot of U.S. and international institutions. So it should come as no surprise that Trump just nominated an outspoken critic of the World Bank to lead the World Bank. Today, it's my pleasure to announce my choice for the next president of the World Bank, Mr. David Malpass. So, who is this guy? Well, from 1993 to 2008, David Malpass was the chief economist at Bear Stearns, which um, eventually had some economic problems. Then he became a professional writer and talking head who's been critical of the World Bank. In 2010, he ran for a U.S. Senate seat as a Republican. He did not win. In 2016, he became an economic advisor for Trump's presidential campaign. And then Trump appointed him Undersecretary of International Affairs for the U.S. Treasury Department. So, he's a former Wall Street economist, a Trump campaign advisor, and a critic of the World Bank. Which is why it's not surprising that Malpass's nomination is drawing criticism. Foreign Policy writes that with the nomination, the Trump administration continues chipping away at the multilateral institutions it derides as globalist. Tony Fratto, who served in the Treasury Department under President George W. Bush, tweeted, David Malpass would be a disastrous, toxic choice for World Bank president. And a senior fellow at the Center for Global Development wrote, his disdain for the World Bank's mission of fighting global poverty rivals John Bolton's respect for the United Nations. Wow, I think someone's going to need some ice for that developing burn. But it turns out there could be a different reason why Trump appointed Malpass. China. Here's Malpass in a 2017 interview with the Council on Foreign Relations. Well, uh, you know, the World Bank's biggest borrower is China. Well, China has plenty of resources, and it doesn't make sense to have <laughs> money borrowed in the U.S. using the U.S. government guarantee going into lending in China for a country that's got other resources and access to capital markets. That's right, China, the world's second largest economy with over $3 trillion in foreign reserves. China has pledged $1 trillion to fund global infrastructure development as part of its One Belt, One Road initiative. And yet, at the same time, China has been leveraging its status as a developing country to get big loans from the World Bank. To date, China has received over $60 billion from the World Bank to fund more than 400 projects. So I get how a country like Liberia is a developing country. The main market in its capital looks like this. But how does China have the same developing country status, even though shopping malls in its capital look like this? Well, it's because there is no real definition for developing country. The World Trade Organization has no official definition. Members announce for themselves whether they are developed or developing countries. And the Chinese Communist Party has taken full advantage of that. Now, this is something the Trump administration has criticized as part of WTO lawsuits and the U.S.-China trade war. But if Malpass heads the World Bank, the Chinese Communist Party might not be able to hide behind the developing country label for much longer. Malpass has a record of using the World Bank to go after China. As the Treasury Undersecretary for International Affairs, Malpass has already been working on World Bank issues. He was instrumental in a 2018 deal that gave the World Bank $13 billion more dollars in funding. Whoa, 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 wait. A $13 billion increase? I thought Malpass hated the World Bank. Why did he support giving them more money? Well, it turns out 
there's a catch. You see, as part of that agreement, the World Bank is required to give more money to poorer countries and less to upper middle income countries. Upper middle income countries include Brazil, Argentina, and China, where the per capita income is now between four and $12,000. The increase in World Bank funding was also done to counter the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. That's basically the Chinese Communist Party's version of the World Bank. And with the increased funding that Malpass pushed for, there are other new restrictions, like that the World Bank should continue to give loans to poor countries to help them develop, but when those poor countries become richer, they get less in subsidized loans. Plus, countries that do successfully develop graduate to a new level. What that means is, though countries may borrow less as they become wealthier, their voting shares across the World Bank will also rise under the proposal, allowing officials there to present it as a sign of progress. That at least made the finance minister of Argentina happy, even though it meant less loan money. Malpass recently told reporters, I care deeply about the mission and about breaking out of poverty and achieving growth, and I am sure the World Bank can succeed. He also said this, I want to also note that a key goal will be to ensure that women achieve full participation in developing economies. Hmm. That doesn't exactly sound like that's someone there to burn the World Bank down. It sounds more like someone who doesn't like how it's being run. This is from a 2017 hearing in the House of Representatives, where he outright accused the World Bank of corruption. They're often corrupt in their lending practices, and they don't get the benefit to the actual people in the countries. The money flows to the people who fly in on a first-class airplane ticket to give advice to the government officials in the country, but not so much the actual benefit to normal people within poor countries. This report from the Heritage Foundation is about 20 years old, but it is interesting because it found that despite decades of lending, more than half of the less developed countries getting World Bank aid were no better off. And most of those countries ended up poorer than before they got World Bank aid. Perhaps even more troubling, according to this 2015 report by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, in the past decade, projects funded by the World Bank have physically or economically displaced an estimated 3.4 million people, forcing them from their homes, taking their land, or damaging their livelihoods. Not only that, the World Bank has failed to protect people living under authoritarian regimes that get World Bank money. It has financed governments and companies accused of human rights violations such as rape, murder, and torture. In some cases, the lenders have continued to bankroll these borrowers after evidence of abuses emerged. For example, in Ethiopia, Authorities diverted millions of dollars from a World Bank-supported project to fund a violent campaign of mass evictions, according to former officials who carried out the forced resettlement program. Some of the World Bank investments may have also contributed to major environmental damage. And according to AFP, World Bank funds have been tied to forced labor in Uzbekistan, death squads in Honduras, and a Chadian oil pipeline that enriched the undemocratic local government all while child mortality rose. So, things could be better. On top of that, there's the mysterious case of the World Bank's former president, Jim Yong Kim. First of all, according to my favorite Chinese state-run media, the Global Times, Jim Yong Kim praised the Chinese Communist Party's lending practices, saying, the One Belt, One Road project is an extremely important one for the Chinese government and also for us. It's strange for him to be praising the One Bell, One Road initiative, since it has a history of locking poor countries in debt traps as part of the Communist Party's imperialist ambitions. There was also a scandal under Jim Yong Kim's tenure. The World Bank's chief economist accused the bank of unfairly ranking countries, and that it was potentially tainted by political motivations of World Bank staff. But then, there's the stranger way Kim stepped down. Kim was appointed by former President Obama in 2012 and reappointed by him in 2016. His term was supposed to end in 2021, but early this year, he abruptly resigned to work for a private firm focused on infrastructure investments. And as the Wall Street Journal points out, Dr. Kim can work for whoever he wants in private life, but it's worth asking how long he was negotiating with a private entity that works with the World Bank 
even while he was leading the bank. So with all that in mind, does Malpass's criticism of the World Bank make him a toxic choice? Of course, you might be wondering, why does the U.S. president get to pick the president of the World Bank? While the U.S. helped create the World Bank and is a major funder, it is made up of 189 countries. There's been a tradition that the U.S. always chooses the leader, while Europe chooses the leader of the World Bank's sister agency, the International Monetary Fund. But theoretically, any country can nominate someone. The final decision is up to the World Bank's board of directors, and they'll decide sometime before March 14th whether to confirm Trump's pick of Malpass. So, what do you think of David Malpass and the World Bank? Leave your comments below. And if you like what we do, support America Uncovered through the crowdfunding website Patreon. It's really hard to fund a show that takes a different approach than the mainstream media. Go to patreon.com slash America Uncovered to learn how you can help. Thanks for watching. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.